Hi! So today I'll be showing you how to use the red print. Now the red print is a community tool made by Yukilop. It's a pretty useful tool that allows you to align your notes, kind of similar to how Ryubi's tool allows you to do it. However, unlike, in, instead of modifying the existing tool, it is more a separate tool set that allows you to work with Protoflux. And to show you better what I mean by that, we'll just go over here. So I'll go into my inventory, and once we're here with more space, I'll simply go into my inventory. We'll go into Yukilov's public, red print, and in here we have the latest version of the red print manager, version 1.3, which is actually 1.3.2. We double tap that to spawn it out. And you can simply have this anywhere in your world. This basically just manages all red prints in the world, which makes the load a bit lighter for the actual tool. We click it, and it will automatically equip us the red print tool, which actually also doubles as a flux tool, because if we click it, you'll get this holographic flux tip. Now, we'll swap this actually back to the red print tip for now. And we'll go over here. Open our context menu and click Spawn Red Print. Now, once we have the red print, there's a few things that you should know about it. First, you can customize it. Here, you can actually change the color of it. So, for example, we can set a nice blue and click Write. This will write to this color variable here. And then it will actually remember the color. Let's see if that worked. And, yep. It worked! Now any red print that I spawn out is going to automatically change to this nice blue. Now, next, you can adjust its scale. So if you have, for example, an avatar that is not a scale of 1, one or you just, for some reason, have scaled yourself up or down, and you want to easily work with your red print manager, you can just click on to scale red print one to one global scale, which will change it to a scale of one, or scale red print to user scale, which will scale it up or down to your scale. Now next, we can have packing roots here. I'll explain them in a sec. But the most important part about this entire thing is that if we go in here to, for example, operators, and we'll just get a multiplier of type color float, why not? We put this on here, you'll see it snaps the node. Not only that, if this node was too big, for example, it would shrink it down. If the node was too small, it would scale it up. So it basically keeps your nodes at the correct size for your chosen size. So if we go here and change it back down, it'll shrink the entire thing along with the node on it. Now, if you don't want it to scale the nodes, you can simply disable scaling and just work with the snapper instead. If you don't want the snapping for whatever reason, you can do that. However, that is kind of the entire point of this system, so it doesn't really make much sense to disable the snapping. However, it is nice when you're not working on it and you have a second one out, like for example, if I had it next to here, I had it out like this, and I don't want it to accidentally snap to this one because I have them very close to each other, I can just disable snapping on one of them, and it'll make sure that it snaps to the correct one. Alright, so the next thing that's really neat that you can do is that if we had more notes here, like for example, let's actually put some more notes there, and we swap back to the red print tip, can actually nicely align that, we can hold down with your, our trigger onto the red print with our red print tip and then drag the selection to cover all of the nodes and then we'll get this little menu. This actually allows us to duplicate the entire node setup and to comment. I am a comment. Now the neat thing about these comments is that you can just make them on any arbitrary node group. So if we select these nodes here, 
bit finicky sometimes. There we go. We select these nodes here. We can also give this comment two. And there we go. But yeah, so what else we can do is we could rotate it. Flipping it vertically, flips them around obviously. We can rotate the nodes themselves. And we can rotate the entire group. Now, another thing you can do is you can generally go back in these windows by just clicking in the center, which just opens and closes it. But what you can also do is you can generate a mini print, which will basically generate this little mini red print, which apparently does not get your client color, and it'll use your selection to generate just this little print. This does not have any of the functionality on here, it's just simply to nicely align them. Also seems to have some issue with the scaling not actually initializing correctly. Now, we simply move this over like this and select the comment. And as you can see, we have this comment here left behind. And if you want to get rid of that, you can also destroy. Now, if you click it, nothing's going to happen. Because in order to destroy it, you have to hold down the button until it's fully filled so that you don't accidentally destroy literally your entire node setup. Because that might be a tiny bit bad. Now, we finally get to one of the neatest parts here, which is the packing. So over here, we have the packing menu. And what this allows us to do, I'll actually use the component reference example inspector here. And we'll delete this and oops, we'll rename this to red print holder and make a new slot here and call this code one. Next, we'll grab code one, we'll put it into pack unpack target. And then we'll simply click Pack 2. Now our code's going to be gone. And if we look into Code 1, you'll see it says Yuki's Red Print version 2.3.6. And in here, you'll have the actual nodes. Now, you can technically unpack it normally like this. However, ideally, you don't do that because in here, it actually has a bunch of data stored that helps it unpack it again. All right, so we'll just quickly unpack it. And the way we unpack it is just, again, we grab code one, slot it into here, and then unpack from code one. Now, by default, it parents the red print to the target slots. This means that now, the red print is actually technically parented underneath the sphere. However, as you can see, it does not move with the sphere because it's positioning, it's actually being driven based on the global position of the object currently. Now, the neat thing about that is if you have some code on your avatar, for example, you can just unpack it onto the red print and work on it at any time without having to get out of your avatar. But the main neat part about the paired red print to target slot is that if you don't do that, so if we pack this and we didn't unpack, it'll actually move it away from this code slot here, and it'll be in here. Now, if you have any dynamic impulses and dynamic variables, which I'll go over in a different video, this will actually break functionality until you pack it again. So by using this pack, uh, parent red prints to target slot by unpacking, you actually prevent breakage in that case. Now, another neat thing is we can simply unpack this again, go up here, and we can give the entire node setup a name. So this will be code one example. And then we just pack it. And if we look here now, it actually named it for us. So instead of saying just Uculot red print, this actually now has a name. And what we'll actually do is we'll duplicate this here, grab code one, put it into here, unpack it, 
rename this to code two example, and then also rename the slot here to code two. Repack it, and now we have two different things here. Now, if we grab the red print holder instead and put it in here, and then click unpack from. Oh, that'll actually not work. I, I remember this working at some point that it actually scans down and finds it for you. However, it seems that now you actually have to have it all in one slot. So you just grab this slot, click unpack from, and it'll actually show you all of the different note packs that you have in here. And it'll even tell you the name. So for example, if we had something that's controls our gestures here, and then here's something that controls lighting on our avatar, and we want to modify the lighting, we just select the lighting, it'll unpack it, we repack it, if we click unpack again, we can just select the other one, and we can quickly unpack and repack the entire setup without having to ever use this hierarchy here again. We just need it once to get the reference to the slot where all of the packs are on. Now, as you can see here also, there's a little button here to get the tooltip in case you didn't have, don't have it anymore from there. Then we have a little column here, which has a wide range of languages such as Japanese, Korean, German, Dutch, French, and so on. As well as here, there's a little button that'll just hide or unhide the menu here. On top of that, this little arrow here lets you move the current note pack around, even outside it. And then the final thing is that up here, you can rescale the area of the red print if you need less or more space. And the final, final thing is that down here is a link to Yukilop's coffee, where you can buy them a coffee. <laughs> All right, that I think pretty much covers the entire functionality of the red print. I hope you enjoyed this video. And as always, leave any suggestions for future videos in the comments below. And I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you like it. Then bye. See you in the next one.